Like, I'm gonna be honest. Up until now, I've always been a dedicated GNOME user. And it's not really surprising why. Its stability, overall looks, the design philosophy and of course the heavy use case and promotion of workspaces makes it a very fast and undeniably efficient desktop environment. That is, as long as you get used to its workflow. And as you know, I personally also like GDK4, or more accurate, their implementation Libet Vita, since it unites the Linux desktop by allowing developers to focus on just one single design. If that's a good thing or a bad thing is an entirely different discussion. But yeah, why the change all of a sudden? What did GNOME do? <laughs> well, actually, nothing in particular. KE Plasma might just be the better desktop environment for me. As I already said in the past, I'm spontaneous and like trying out new things. So let's talk about it. But first, I'd like to remind you that you don't forget to give this video a like. And if you're new to the channel or are already here a second time, then you should also consider subscribing for more Linux content just like this. Thanks, I really appreciate it. So, KD Plasma. Why now? And not earlier. As you might know, I'm a guy who likes to try out new things. But given the overall content of my channel, you might have also noticed that I'm a person who likes to address everyone. And that also includes, I'm gonna call them not yet Linux users. And believe it or not, I still think that GNOME is still superior in usability and overall design. Sorry Plasma. And I can already hear you typing, but hear me out. KD Plasma is not bad out of the box, that's not what I mean at all. What I mean by GNOME is better in terms of design and usability is that they kind of lock users in by design. You have your clean desktop, no obvious way to change designs or add stuff like taskbars and a given way how you operate the desktop. That is really good for new users, but not really something that Linux and a majority of its community stands for. KDE Plasma is the complete opposite in that way. While it initially seems familiar and easy to use, the sheer amount of customization options can become a nightmare real quick if a user messes up something. Not bad, just a different philosophy when it comes to customization. Part of the reason on why I've used GNOME for so long was because of this channel. GNOME didn't ever break on me, while on Plasma I used to have a lot of issues in comparison. Themes and icons only applying in some weird half way, flickering or disappearing mouse cursors, some weird issue where the horizontal monitor had the same height as the vertical one, no easy way to reset the GUI when trying out excessive changes, and the list goes on. Now, problems like that can happen from time to time. And I should also mention that most of the issues that I've encountered personally happened over more than one and a half years ago, so a lot has changed since then. And the latest release, Plasma 5.27, really shows that KDE Plasma actually can provide a stable and functioning desktop experience, even if you deliberately try to break it. This level of polish, in combination with my new setup and program updates, finally gives me the time and confidence to dive into Plasma and shape it into something that GNOME just doesn't seem to provide. A unique desktop experience that allows me to push all of my hardware to its limits by just being much faster when it comes to fundamental changes. Like, you know, I really like GNOME's workflow, but they are incredibly slow when it comes to merging anticipated features in favor of stability and compatibility. Variable refresh rate support for FreeSync capable displays? Not merged yet. Disabling vSync on Wayland? It took years. Fractional scaling on Wayland? Uh, not yet. Now like I said, GNOME is the good old standard that just continues to work. But that is also what's holding it back. KDE is a lot quicker to implement features into Plasma, which does result in some hiccups here and there, but it's not something major, especially for a private desktop. I'm still playing video games on Linux, and some games like CSGO felt off on GNOME for a long time, mainly because of forced vSync. And while this has got a lot better in the past, there is still a noticeable difference when it comes to the smoothness of the game. 
Matter, GNOME's compositor, still hasn't reached the state yet that it needs for proper gaming sessions in more competitive games. Though, do be fair, every game is different and it depends a lot on how well it's optimized. Apex Legends, for example, doesn't have these issues since it manages to not skip any frames on Wayland. Skipped frames can be caused by both parties. However, Plasma manages to solve these issues much quicker. Okay, so now let's move on to something that KDU Plasma is really known for. Customization. I still personally think that Plasma offers too many submenus out of the box, which can confuse a lot of people. That being said, while that's my opinion from a usability perspective, it isn't something that I mind for me personally. It's actually quite the opposite. For building your own custom experience, the sheer amount of customization options are kind of insane. By default it looks a lot like Windows 10, but you can easily make it look like Windows 11, Mac OS or something completely different. You can even try to replicate GNOME and to a certain degree even its workflow. But why would someone want to do this anyway? Well mainly to get the best of both worlds. But also refine it better to your personal needs. Like I said, GNOME's development can be quite slow when it comes to fundamental changes in its shell or compositor. Their promise of stability and for a long time every frame should look perfect philosophy like Wayland has held development back and it's still not there yet. Now again, that's not a bad thing. For something that needs to be reliable and easy to understand, GNOME is objectively speaking the better option in my opinion. However, when it comes to customization, gaming, the overall capabilities of the desktop environment and development pacing, then Plasma is the way to go. And also consider this, when I talk about something being more stable and reliable, I'm not really talking about any real noticeable differences. Everything that is considered less stable on Linux is just potentially less stable. It doesn't really mean that it crashes more often or that your applications are bad. No. Yeah, I've had my fair share of problems with Plasma in the past. However, most of them aren't there anymore, or at least not to that extent. And all of these problems didn't really cause any downtime or anything. They were just some minor inconveniences that could be fixed or worked around in minutes. That's actually a pretty cool thing about Linux in general. Something either works or it doesn't. Random and reoccurring bugs are very rare, since open source helps to identify problems much quicker. Everyone could potentially identify what's wrong with something. So yeah, KD Plasma. A solid and stable desktop environment, which offers a ton of customization, while the amount of options could potentially result in lesser experienced users breaking something. Is it a lesser experience because of that? No, of course not. It's just different. Which is good, because it gives you a choice and I can't wait to work with it. So if you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and also subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Okay, so tech upgrade, check. Starting to build my own distro, check. Let's see what happens next. In the meantime, you can already watch another video. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.